Now, South Africa scientists have been hailed among the world's best, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic, but that praise is now a little bit more official. A Political, which is a governance specialist organization, has named six local scientists among the 100 most influential academics in government for COVID-19 response. One of them is Professor Michael Sean Pepper. He's the director of the Institute for Cellular and Molecular Medicine at the University of Pretoria. He's joining us now. Prof, congratulations and thank you very much for the time. I mean, this kind of recognition, what does it mean? to you personally before we speak about the professional side of things well thank you very much mr moyani uh, i have to be quite honest that i have no idea how i ended up in this um, illustrious list of of people who have made such um, a, such worthwhile contributions um, this means a lot uh, to my group in particular and to the scientists that i work with and also to the University of Pretoria that has been uh, incredibly supportive of all the work that we've done. Um, and I just have to point out perhaps that um, I'm not seeing patients myself um, and that my group is primarily a research group. And so we fo focus on the molecular and cellular elements um, in response to the virus. Yes. And we have um, four being fortunate in being able to publish a lot of this work. Yeah, but I mean, uh, th this list, uh, this A Political's 100 Most Influential Academics in Government for the Efforts, it's really for the efforts uh, uh, against the COVID-19. Uh, it touches both on scientists and, and, and researchers, and, uh, and you are being modest after all. I mean, you, you, you are with the Institute for Cellular and Molecular Medicine at the Faculty of Health Sciences, the University of Pretoria. I don't think it's a mistake that you are in this list. I mean sharing it with the likes of Professor Glenda Gray, Professor Shabir Mahdi, Professor Linda Gale Becker, Professor Taryn Young, and uh, Professor Tulio de Oliveira. I mean, I guess you should own the, uh, 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 that honor. But I guess it goes a long way, in my view, professionally, to recognize the role of scientists and researchers like yourselves who've helped us uh, to navigate this, this pandemic. Well, yes, indeed. I think we have uh, been blessed as a country with outstanding scientists and, um, and administrators. Um, we have a long history, obviously, of uh, communicable diseases, including HIV and TB. And so we've been able to um, lean on that experience um, to a very great extent. Uh, we've had some very good leaders, uh, such as Professor um, Tulio D'Oliveira, who is at the forefront of sequencing the virus. Um, and then you've mentioned all the other people who I think have played a major role. And I think South Africa should be very proud of its uh, scientists and its clinicians, um, who sometimes work under challenging conditions, but nonetheless manage to turn out a work of very high quality that has a global impact. And um, I'm really very honored to be amongst this group um, who need to be recognized for, the, for the, the very large contribution they've made. Yeah, I'm sure you played your part as well as, as a researcher. But for somebody else who might just be tuning in and say, OK, uh, we are congratulating Professor Michael Sean Pepper. He's among the others who have been listed as among the 100 most influential academics in the country by a political, which, which is this good governance uh, institute. Cellular and molecular medicine. What do you research? Just give us an idea. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayani. So, um... I would like to take everybody back to um, their biology classes at school where they learned about cells and they learned about DNA and about proteins. And this is essentially what we do. We work at the molecular level. So we look at um, the things, for example, that will affect the host response. Um, as you may well be aware, if you had to take 100 people and you had to infect them or they had to be infected uh, with COVID-19, you'd see very different responses amongst different people. Um, obviously, people with comorbidities are affected more than those that don't have them, but we're seeing young people, and in particular with this new variant, a lot of children are being infected, uh, but also very healthy people. And so we try and understand why. 
And in order to do that, we have to get to the to the bottom of of, of people's DNA, what they've inherited from their parents, how the environment has conditioned them. And so we try to dig deeper and try to understand uh, what makes these differences. Um, not only with regard to how people respond to the virus, but also um, how they will respond to the vaccine. And as you know, there are um, a group of people who are reluctant uh, to be vaccinated, but I think it's been very, very clearly shown now, and you even showed a slide earlier in, in your program, um, where the benefits of vaccination are coming through very clearly. And um, I have some very bright students in my group who are working on trying to understand the molecular basis. In other words, what is it at, at the base of all of this that results in this variation? Oh, okay. Now, thank you for explaining. I mean, this very important work because this uh, this list by a political actually is recognizing academics and scientists and researchers like yourselves from around the world. Let's just be clear, and, and it's for the work that you are doing that's influencing policy making and, and and getting that 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 very much needed information and data on on what's needed to to solve challenges facing societies and and, and countries. And current, of course, it is a it is the epidemic and while we celebrate you as one of those researchers in the country and of course recognize the other scientists that uh, me and, uh, and and I and some of my colleagues at ENC have have the honor to interview here and the privilege rather to interview because of the pandemic here you know the likes of Professor Glenda Gray I've mentioned uh, Professor uh, Shabir Madi and Tulo de Oliveira among others is that recently you seem to have been punished by the rest of the world uh, as scientists, I'm talking about the collective term here, when you, you manage to identify, for example, Omicron, you, you, you must have been gutted, Prof. I, I was a little bit um, frustrated, Mr. Moyani. Um, we have brilliant scientists here, um, we've mentioned them already, that are at the forefront globally of sequencing this virus and tracking its movement around the planet. And unfortunately, South Africa uh, is the soft underbelly here. It is easy to quickly uh, point a finger at South Africa for having been at the origin of this uh, new variant. But work done subsequently on historical samples showed that the variant has been present in many places and that one cannot point the finger at South Africa. And there was thankfully a very strong pushback uh, from many South Africans, uh, both in the medical and scientific area, but in other areas too. And I think the message finally started to get home uh, that, you know, you cannot blame this on, on one country. I do, however, want to um, emphasize something that has been um, brought to the fore multiple times by, by my colleagues uh, in the country, and that is that we need to be very mindful of the fact that we do have a population, um, particularly because of the high prevalence of HIV, we do have a population that if not adequately managed, could become an incubator uh, for the emergence of new variants. Um, and so it is equally important as we treat COVID-19, which regrettably is draining many of our resources, that we do not forget other very important diseases in South Africa like HIV um, because it is people who are immunocompromised as a consequence of HIV and other diseases um, that could lead to the emergence of new variants. And I think this may have played some part uh, in the finger pointing that happened when Omicron was first identified, but it was completely inappropriate. And instead of recognizing our scientists and um, putting them on a pedestal for the amazing work that they're doing to combat this pandemic globally, um, people decided to uh, give South Africa a hard time. But anyway, I'm very happy to say that that situation seems to have been reversed now. And um, th the true brilliance that comes from our local scientists is, is, is being, uh, being recognized.
Yeah, and the transparency that uh, you gifted to the world. Uh, would it change in the future? Would you do things differently knowing the kind of, of unnecessary and, 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 and uh, backlash and at some point it bordered on racism in terms of Europe and America and Canada against an African country? Would you as a South African scientist uh, behave differently in the future if you discovered something new about COVID-19? Absolutely not. Um, I think we have a responsibility not only to our own people, but we have a global responsibility. And, you know, we've weathered storms of institutionalized racism before. Um, and um, we've come out um, on, on top in many ways. So not at all. I think we have to press on. We have to make our work as transparent and um, accessible as possible. And South Africa is really playing a major role um, in in combating the consequences of this um, pandemic, which has changed our lives completely. Uh, Prof, before I let you go, and as a, as, a, as a parting thought from you, you've mentioned one issue, that because of what has happened with the Omicron variant and how the rest of the world treated us, uh, uh, we should be aware that the South Africa is like a, the soft underbelly of this big challenge that we're facing because of the other diseases like HIV, and that uh, there could be an incubation of sorts of happening to produce or create other variants. I think it's a very important message. What else would be an important message for us to understand today, scientifically, as South Africa, as we are dealing with Omicron? We're seeing the numbers spiking province by province. Currently, KwaZulu-Natal has uh, overtaken Gauteng as, as the new uh, hotspot, let's say, for the Omicron variant. But we're seeing mild symptoms. We're not seeing high numbers of hospitalizations. What would be your message from a scientific pers perspective as we celebrate you as being one of those scientists who's been honored by a political? Uh, Mr. Moyani, I think there are two things. The first is that there is absolutely no question that vaccination is the way to go here. Um, and all I can do is, is sincerely plead with those people who are not being vaccinated uh, to consider this seriously. Um, you saw the figures earlier on your program. There are many other figures that I could cite, but it's very, very important that we follow through with the vaccination. Um, there is now a booster available. Uh, some people have had it already, um, and it will be available in, the, in, in other sectors in early in the new year. So there's absolutely no question that we have to go the vaccination route. Um, and just very closely behind that, I, I'd like to raise a second issue, and that is this um, devastatingly destructive um, phenomenon of misinformation. Uh, we're seeing uh, so much misinformation around the pandemic, um, even from very reputable people, uh, even Nobel Prize winners who are taking information and um, explaining it completely out of context and confusing everybody and really adding to the problem. Um, and I think part of the anti-vaxxer movement is fueled by a lot of this misinformation. So. I think those are two problems that go hand in hand. Um, if we can move closer to objective data and to the truth and also encourage people to be vaccinated, I think that will go a long way to helping us deal uh, with the consequences of COVID-19. Professor Michael Sean Pepper, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Congratulations once more in order. He's, of course, the director of the Institute for Cellular and Molecular Medicine at the University of Pretoria.